السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him and all his companions And as always we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us For without the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We would not know what to do and where to go May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and our offspring And may he grant us the goodness of the dunya as well as that of the akhirah Beloved brothers and sisters in Islam we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost for having granted us this opportunity to gather in His obedience. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us the sacrifice of standing in salah for His sake and of fasting during the daylight hours for His sake. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the true reward of this. Yesterday we heard how one of the nations was destroyed. And today we are going into the life of one of the highest of the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he is one of the messengers who was sent not only to his people, but even to his own father. And up to this point, the messengers were sent to their nations. Here we find a young boy. He was born in Iraq. He was born in Babylon, Babel. And at that time there was a king known as Nimrud. This king was a very, very powerful king. Allah had given him a lot of power and authority. And if you notice, this is the messenger, the great messenger, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, Abraham. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. He is such a great man that all the messengers who came after him were from his family. Subhanallah. He is such a great man, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested him. Not once, not twice, but again and again. And he passed every single test. And do you know what? He was mostly at the beginning single in his call. Nobody accepted his message besides one young boy. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. And one narration says later on, there was... So what happened? At that time, the people were worshipping idols. And they were worshipping wealth. And he was born, as he grew up, he's seen his father. His father, the Quran says his name was Azar. So we will use that particular name. Azar, the father of Abraham. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of how Azar used to make idols and sell them. So the young boy, he was watching his father carving idols out of wood and stone. And then he would see his father selling them. Then he would notice people prostrate to these things that his own father was carving. And he would notice people asking these stones and these pieces of wood to give them good health and to grant them long lives and to give them sustenance and to guide them and so on. So he was shocked. One day he seen this big idol and he tells his father, Oh my father, what is this? He says, these are idols. So it has such a big ear. He says, yes. This is because it hears everything. This idol here, those who will buy it, it will listen to them. So what used to happen at the time, the poor, they could afford small idols, little ones. The rich, they had big, big idols. So when people had a bigger problem, they went to borrow a god belonging to someone else because it was bigger. Allahu Akbar. Look at how foolish they were. Yet they had brains. The young boy, he started asking his father. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this boy, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, in 73 different places in the Quran. And in 25 different surahs of the Quran, one of those surahs named after him, Surah Ibrahim. Inshallah, we will read that tomorrow by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Taraweeh. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this young boy. Allah says, 
ولقد آتينا إبراهيم رشده من قبل وكنا به عالمين إذ قال لأبيه وقومه ما هذه التماثيل التي أنتم لها عاكفون And indeed we had given Ibrahim a long time ago guidance from a very early age, well in advance. And we knew very well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all-knowing. Allah says, remember when Ibrahim asked his father and his nation, his people, meaning his father's people, what is this that you are worshipping? They said, straight answer, straight forward. قَالُوا نعبد أصناما فنظل لها عاكفين. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "They said we are worshiping idols, and we will continue worshiping these idols." So he asks them a question. قال هل يسمعونكم إذ تدعون؟ Do they hear you when you're calling out to them? أو ينفعونكم أو يضرون. Can they benefit you in any way or can they harm you in any way? They neither said yes nor did they say no. They kept quiet, but they answered him in a different way. What did they say? قالوا وجدنا أباءنا لها عابدين. They said, we found our forefathers worshipping them. That was the answer. So listen very carefully. They did not say yes, they did not say no. They just said when he asked them, do they hear you when you call? Or can they help you? Can they harm you? Can they benefit you? They said, look, we found our forefathers doing this. And in another verse they said, we found our forefathers exactly worshipping these idols. So we will continue worshipping the idols. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, makes mention of even more questions. He says, قَالَ أَفَرَأَيْتُمْ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْبُدُونَ أَنْتُمْ وَآبَاؤُكُمُ الْأَقْدَمُونَ فَإِنَّهُمْ عَدُوٌ لِي إِلَّا رَبَّ الْعَالَمِينَ You see, these things that you people are worshipping, you and your forefathers that you have been worshipping all along, all of these things that you've been worshipping for so many years, they are all, including yourselves, enemies of mine. There is only one that I worship and that is Rabbul Alameen, the Lord of all the worlds, the Creator, whoever made everything here, that is whom I worship. So from a very young age, he understood that I cannot worship a stone or a stick or a piece of wood or anything. I need to only worship whoever made me. That's it. Now this was the sense. Allah says, "Atayna Ibrahim Rushda." Allah gave him the guidance at a very young age. He was young, very young. When he started questioning, some narrations say his age was only seven. He started questioning, age of seven. And after that, he grew up to a young boy and so on. And he started questioning, "Look, my father, what are you doing?" One beautiful verse, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says. وَاذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ إِنَّهُ كَانَ صِدِّيقًا نَبِيًّا And remember in the book, the prophet Abraham, may peace be upon him, he was indeed a very truthful prophet. إِذْ قَالَ لِأَبِيَّا أَبَتِ لِمَا تَعْبُدُ مَا لَا يَسْمَعُ وَلَا يُبْصِرُ وَلَا يُغْنِي عَنْكَ شَيْئًا When he told his father, Oh my father, how can you worship something that cannot hear you, it cannot see you, and it cannot help you in anything? It won't be able to do a single thing for you. يَا أَبَتِ إِنِّي قَدْ جَاءَنِي مِنَ الْعِلْمِ مَا لَمْ يَأْتِكْ فَاتَّبِعْنِي أَهْدِكَ صِرَاطًا سَوِيًّا O my father, knowledge has come to me that did not come to you. So follow me, I will show you the right path. I'll show you the guidance. And he's a young boy saying this. 
Say, oh my father, look, let me tell you common sense. And I want to talk to you. I want to discuss and debate with you. Tell me, what is the answer? The father also said, look, don't question. I don't want any questions. We've been following our forefathers. And the biggest problem is I'm making money out of this. How can you tell me to stop it? Come on. Today, if someone was engaged in, say, for example, haram income, either making money out of liquor, making money out of something that is very prohibited, or making money through gambling, making money through stealing and so on, and the son says, Dad, that's very wrong. The father will say, well, who's going to put a plate on your food? Who's going to put a plate of food in front of you there? Straight answer, cash. The people have got cash answers, not even checks so that it can bounce. Allahu Akbar. No, straight. How can you question me? Now this is something we need to know. Our children will correct us. And that also is a gift of Allah. And it's a test of Allah upon us. Azar, he failed his test. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had mercy on him at that stage by sending his own son to come to him and say, My father, how can you worship something you're making with your own hands? Come on, come on. And the father says, No, keep quiet. And the people said, no, keep quiet. Allahu Akbar. So, Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam continues. He says, Ya abati la ta'budi shaytan. Oh my father, don't worship the devil. Now you're falling into the trap of the devil. Imagine, as young as he was, he started understanding that there are two forces. The force of the creator, the maker, and there is another force trying to deviate man. And he says, oh my father, don't worship the devil. Indeed, the devil was very, very far from the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The devil transgressed against the command of Allah, of the most merciful. Oh my father, I have a very big fear for you that the most merciful might punish you. Look at the words he's using. For the most merciful to punish, it has to be one act of worship. That is shirk. When someone associates a partnership with Allah, the most merciful says, that is the time. When he punishes the hadith, in fact, the verse of the Quran, Allah says, Allah will not forgive association of partnership with him, but besides that, he will forgive any other sin he wishes if a person dies in that condition. So if one has engaged in shirk and association of partnership with Allah in worship, then if they have repented before their death, good news, Allah will forgive them. But if they have died on that condition, Allah makes a promise that for that you will have to be punished. So this is why Ibrahim alayhi salam says, I fear inni akhafu an yamassaka adabun min ar-Rahman. Look at the two words being used. I fear that punishment will overtake you from the one who is most merciful. That means you have to have done something really, really, really bad. Allahu Akbar. May Allah safeguard us from shirk. This is why, Wallahi, I swear by Allah, who is the owner of this house, and I swear by Allah who has raised the skies without pillars, that Wallahi, thumma Wallah, all the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned their people about association of partnership with Allah in acts of worship. Whenever we engage in any act of worship, it must be solely for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it must be in accordance with what was taught by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The reason is, Allah has declared that we are not allowed to worship Him according to our desires. We need to worship Him how He wants us to worship Him. And this is why we have to stand in salah at specific times, do specific things. That is called worship. When you're doing what you want, that's not worship. When you're doing what you want, a man can stand waving at the sun all day. And he can say, well, I'm worshipping Allah, it makes me happy. Allahu Akbar. 
That is not worship. Whenever you want to see if you're engaging in something that you feel is going to draw you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask yourself a question. Were we taught this by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? If we were, you engage in it. If not, we're falling into the trap of shaitan. There are people who drink alcohol. And they say, well, look, it brings me closer to God. I, I forget my sins, I'm happy, it satisfies me. There are people who commit adultery. And they say, look, that's very, very good because you know what? That's what man is created for, to reproduce and so on and to enjoy and whatever. And it makes me happy and it satisfies me. Well, in that particular case, if they consider that something that brings satisfaction to them, then the devil is somewhere inside that pipeline. May Allah protect us. This is why it's a law. The Sharia has no gray area. Whenever there is an area that we think is great, just stay far from it. The reason is, Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal rasoolu, ballighd ma unzila ilayka min rabbik. O messenger, convey in the most clear of terms, ballighd. Ballighd means to convey in a very, very clear manner the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Convey it very clearly. So anything we needed to know is extremely clear. Brighter than the sun. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. This is why the narration says, Layluha kanahariha la yazigu anha illa halik. The path, which is the straight path, when you are walking on it during the day or the night, it's as clear as anything. It's all the same. Nobody can be deviated from that straight path except one who is rejected, destroyed. May Allah safeguard us. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. After questioning his father, he starts making mention of qualities that need to be found in a deity that anyone should worship. If you want to worship something, you should ask yourself the following questions. And he says, The one who created me and the one who guides me. Whoever created me, I owe my worship. To him. Whoever guides me is the same one who created me. I owe my worship to him. The one who feeds me and who quenches my thirst. The one whom when I am sick and ill, he grants me cure. That is the one, the only, the creator. The one who will cause my death and he will give me life thereafter. And the one whom I have hope in that he can forgive my sins on the day of reckoning. After we die and we are resurrected, there will be a day of reckoning. Whoever is the owner of forgiveness on that day, that is whom I will put my head on the ground for, nobody else. Allahu Akbar. This is the statement of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. And he continues. Oh my Rabb. Grant me the judgment between right and wrong. Grant me correct judgment. And join me with those who are pious. Now he was alone. Nobody listened to him. Not one. Not even one. Allahu Akbar. At that stage, no one. So what happened? After some time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam continued with them to remind them that whoever created the skies and the earth and whoever made us, that is whom you are supposed to be worshipping. These stones and these idols have not made anyone. He says, قَالَ بَرْ رَبُّكُمْ رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ الَّذِي فَطَرَهُنَّ Your Rabb. And what is the meaning of the term Rabb? We've been through it, we will go through it just now. But he says, Your Rabb is the Rabb, the creator of the skies and the earth. Whoever made everything in existence is your Rabb. Now the meaning of Rabb, creator, nourisher, cherisher, sustainer, provider, protector, curer, the one in absolute control of every aspect of existence is known as Rabb. So when we say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, what we mean is, all praise is due 
to the worshipped one who is the creator, nourisher, cherisher, sustainer, provider, protector, curer of absolutely everything in existence. He is in supreme control. That is the one whom we owe every point of praise to. Subhanallah. Look at how powerful the statement is. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, after saying that, he noticed something. That these people, when they wanted sustenance, they quickly ran to these stones. And they quickly ran to all these pieces of wood that they had all around. And they went and they asked for sustenance. We want sustenance. And he noticed that they even went to people. People who were dead. And they started asking them for sustenance. So look at what he says. Ibrahim alayhi salam says, all those whom you are calling out to besides Allah to give you sustenance, they do not own a droplet of sustenance. Allah is the owner of sustenance, so you should solely and only ask Allah directly for sustenance, for indeed He is the one who will grant you sustenance, and you should be grateful and thankful to Him alone, because it is to Him alone you are going to return to. What a powerful statement from a young boy growing up. He had the sense. This is why Allah says, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ رُشْدَهُ مِنْ قَبْلُ we gave Ibrahim the guidance a long, long time ago from an early age. He was rightly guided by Allah from a young age. Now, he started talking about these idols to the people and questioning everyone. They did not have answers. The only answer they had, one thing, we have found our forefathers doing this. That's it. No other answer. They were happy and this is the way. And because people were making money, one borrows the God, the other one doesn't borrow the God. And what else used to happen, according to one, uh, some historical narrations, that when somebody asked an idol something and say that was done, people started borrowing that idol to say this one's got more power. <laughs> Look at this. Look at how foolish they were. Wallahi, this can happen up to today. When a person visits a certain tree somewhere in Khurasan and he makes a dua to the tree or whatever and he says, look, I've come all the way to the tree and I've made tawaf around the tree and then his problem is solved. Other people will start going to the same tree who have that problem. Because he'll go and say, look, this is what I did and it helped. Allahu Akbar. Look at this. So this is what was happening at the time and the people were excited and shaitan was playing games with them, flicking them from one corner to another, pillar to post. So Ibrahim alayhi salam says, وَتَاللَّهِ لَأَكِيدَنَّ أَصْنَامَكُمْ بَعْدَ أَن تُوَلُّوا مُدْبِرِينَ He says to himself, Wallahi, I am going to destroy these idols. I'm going to plan and plot against them. Once these people are gone, I will plot against the idols. So what happened? Some people heard him making mention of these idols. A few people heard him making mention of the fact that he wants to plan something. He wants to do something. So they used to have their day in a week when they used to go out, everybody and pray. They used to take their gods along and they used to go. And the father had a warehouse, what we call a warehouse, where all the gods that were not yet sold were there. So what happened is, small ones, big ones, little ones, ones with big ears to depict those who, who can hear, one with big eyes that can see and so on. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, when they told him, let's go, we want to go and pray. He says, Inni saqeem. I am sick. He says what? I am sick. Now he was not physically ill, but what he meant is, I'm sick of what you people are doing. I'm not coming with you. So he just said, I'm sick. He didn't finish the sentence, obviously. He says, I'm sick and I'm not coming with you. So they went away. When they all went, he now decided to open this door. He went into the room. He looks at all his idols and he says, yes, talk to me. Talk to me. So naturally, there was no answer. That is by nature. <laughs> it's a stone. It's a stick. So he says, Malakum la What's wrong with you? You're not talking to me. 
He gave them a chance to talk. فَرَاغَ عَلَيْهِمْ ضَرْبًا بِالْيَمِينَ He started hitting them and destroying them one by one. And he's asking them questions as he's destroying them. What are you going to do? Can you help yourself? You can't help yourself. You can't help anyone else. Here you are. One gone. Two gone. Three gone. The whole lot of them gone. But that one with big ears, he left it. Why did he leave it? Because he was very intelligent. Extremely intelligent. He hung the axe on its ear. On the ear. And he went away. And he went back to sleep. Now when they came back, they noticed that all these idols are broken. Who did this to our gods? Indeed, he is very, very wrong. He is from amongst the oppressors. قَالُوا سَمِعْنَا فَتَنْ يَذْكُرُهُمْ يُقَالُ لَهُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ They said, we heard a young boy. Fata. Fata meaning young, a youngster. We heard a youngster mentioning them and his name is Ibrahim. We heard someone called Ibrahim mention them. Why are they saying this? They don't want to associate with this man. If someone were to tell you, I heard Ibrahim saying this, that means they know Ibrahim. But if someone were to say, I heard someone called Ibrahim say this, that means they want to pretend that they don't know who, who Ibrahim is. They've got no link with him. Look, they did not want any association at all. So they, they asked Ibrahim, they called him. Man qalu. مَنْ فَعَلَ هَذَا بِآلِهَتِنَا يَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ They said, Oh Ibrahim, who did this to our gods? So he looked at them, he looks at the gods, and he says, كَبِيرُهُمْ هَذَا فَاسْأَلُوهُمْ إِنْ كَانُوا يَنْطِقُونَ This big one here, you ask him, maybe he might know what happened. See, does he talk? What a question. Look at a young boy and just try and picture the whole community waiting and standing. Big, big people, leaders of the community and society, his father and his relatives and everybody. And they're looking at this young boy, look, pointing there and saying, you know what, ask the big one. I'm sure he'll have an answer for you. Does he talk? They knew that this was wrong. So what happened? Immediately they felt within themselves that we are wrong. For a split moment they thought that, you know what, this youngster is right, these things don't speak. But immediately they were overtaken by all the other thoughts and, and they said, no, 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 no. This young boy is wrong, he is guilty. So what did they do? They decided we need to punish him. They had their meetings, they arrested him, they chained him up, and they said, you know what, burn him to death, to set an example, so nobody must do this again, no one. And Ibrahim alayhi salam is one, alone. But his belief in his maker was solid. He says, oh my creator, you are enough for me as a protector. Whoever made me, protect me. No one else. I don't want anyone else's help. Whoever made me, protect me. That was his dua. Ibrahim alayhi salam. So his father tells him, You better keep quiet, my son. Allahu Akbar. His father told him at one stage, Oh my son, if you do not keep quiet, and if you do not stop asking all these silly questions, I will stone you to death personally. Imagine his father, his own father, wants to kill him 
wants to stone him to death. And now the community is saying, burn him. So what did they do? They decided, yes, we must. And they prepared a fire. And one narration says it took them a long time to prepare that fire. It was really, they got lots of fuel from all over. And it was so hot that from a distance they, they had to send the fuel with a catapult into the fire. And it is reported that even the birds that flew over it, they dropped into it. That's how hot it was. And what happened? They then got Ibrahim alayhi salam. He was all tied up in ropes and chains. And they put him into a catapult. Why? Because they couldn't throw him into there. Getting close to it would burn them as well. And they released the catapult. So Allah created from the point that the catapult released him, Allah created steps going down. As he was being thrown, he made a dua. What was this dua? One dua. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us this in a narration in Sahih al-Bukhari. Hasbuna Allahu wa ni'mal wakil. Enough. Allah is enough for me. And he is the best disposer of affairs. Ya Allah, you are enough for me. You alone protect me. Look what they're doing. You made me. You can help. You can hear. These idols cannot. You can see. These idols cannot. You are in control. These idols cannot. Ya Allah, I am at your protection. I am under your protection. So as he was released, there were stairs created. So he was literally coming down in such a beautiful way into the fire. And these people are looking at him. And as he went in, Allah says, Qulna, we decreed to the fire. Ya naru kuni bardan wa salaman ala Ibrahim. We said, O oh fire, become cold and be a means of peace to Ibrahim. So immediately, if someone is tied up with, with chains and ropes, for the fire to be a means of peace, it had to burn the ropes and chains. So now he was released. Subhanallah, he was released. And as he's released, he goes in there and he felt so comfortable. Later on, he makes mention in his life that the best time that I've ever spent during my lifetime was that time that I was in the fire. Imagine, young boy, now everybody is watching. Everybody is watching. Nobody said magician, nobody said because they were shocked. He was a boy and he is being assisted. And they know for a fact, none of those stones or pieces of wood, none of those idols have helped him. Not even one. The one who made him helped him. Now he comes in to the fire. And he is very happily enjoying. And then he walks out of that fire very calmly. As he walks out, they are just shocked looking at him. They don't know. So one young man gets up. And he decides, I want to follow you. You are right. These people are wrong. Allahu Akbar. Young man. Who was this young man? His nephew. Lut alayhi salatu was salam. The prophet Lut, he was not yet a prophet. He was a young, young boy. The nephew of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. He came up and he's seen everything and he'd watched it. And he decided, I surrender to whoever made me as well. Look at the common sense. They don't want to surrender to their maker. I always tell people that Islam is the religion of Abraham. Which means the Abrahamic religion. They call it Abrahamic monotheism. He says, I worship the one who made me. Whoever made me. I call him the worshipped one. And that's who I will dedicate every act of worship to. Nobody else and nothing else. Finished. That is Ibrahim. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala became so happy with him. And as they were saved, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they decided we now need to leave because these people are making our life difficult and they need to go. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَآمَنَ لَهُ لُوطٌ Lut accepted his message and believed in what he brought. وَقَالَ إِنِّي مُهَاجِرٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي And he said, 
I am, I am making hijrah for the sake of Allah. I cannot worship Allah here with these people around. We've tried everything. They've seen the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now I need to go elsewhere so that I can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala correctly. And the two of them decided to leave the place. Now, there are two, three stories that are mentioned in the Quran that are very beautiful. We'll try and make mention of one or two of them. Firstly, Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Ya Allah, I want to see how you are going to resurrect. How do you resurrect? How do you give life to the dead? Not to say I don't believe. I believe firmly, but I'm just interested in knowing. You know, it's like a child telling you, Mom, how did you make that? Just show me. It's not like they, they don't believe that you made it. You did. But they want to see how it's done. Curiosity. Now this is a higher example because it is definitely a messenger. Nowhere near the example I gave just now. But Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah makes mention in the Quran. وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ أَرِنِي كَيْفَ تُحْيِي الْمَوْتَى قَالَ أَوَلَمْ تُؤْمِنْ And remember when Ibrahim alayhi salam asked his Rabb, O oh my Rabb, show me how do you give life to the dead? And Allah says, O oh Ibrahim, don't you believe? He says, قَالَ بَلَى O oh indeed I believe. وَلَكِنْ لِيَطْمَئِنَّ قَلْبِي But I just want to put a bit of comfort in my heart. I want to see it for myself. قَالَ فَخُذْ أَرْبَعَةً مِّنَ الطَّيْرِ Allah told him, take four birds. Take four birds. So he got four birds. Then Allah says, فَصُرْهُنَّ إِلَيْكَ ثُمَّ جَعَلْ عَلَى كُلِّ جَبَلٍ مِّنْهُنَّ جُزْءًا Cut them into pieces, mix them up totally, and put all the different pieces onto different mountains, the tops of mountains. Different mountains. Then when you are standing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Then call them and see what happens. They will come flying back to you. Allahu Akbar. So he did that and then he called the birds and he started watching these birds. Amazing. When he started watching these birds, they flew back to him when he called them. And then Allahu Akbar, Allah says, and you should know that Allah is all powerful, all wise. This is a young boy. His iman in Allah has now been strengthened one after the other. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a lot more as they left and they went further up, further away from where they were in Iraq. They shifted towards the Middle East and they were on their way to a blessed land. Allah makes mention of that blessed land in the Quran. And on their way there, they stopped in a place known as Harran. In Harran, Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, he was a man who used to debate. He used to discuss with everybody he met. He used to talk about my creator. Who do you worship? They would say, we worship this. And he would start inviting them to say, don't worship that. Worship whoever made you. Everybody he met, he did it with them. Firstly, he did it with his father. Then, amazingly, he did it with the king, Namrud. Inshallah, we will see that tomorrow. And thereafter, when he went to Harran, he did it with the people of Harran. With Namrud, that was the king of the time, when he had heard that this young boy was saved from the fire, just before he left with Lut, alayhi salam, Namrud called him. So he was taken to the court of Namrud. And Namrud started asking him questions. Hey, what do you think? What happened here? And so on. Inshallah, we'll get to those questions and answers tomorrow. Until then, we say, Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahi bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.